So today I am here to confess my sins, which are how many unread books there are on my Kindle. So I've been thinking over the past few days I'm probably going to read a few more books on my Kindle over the coming weeks and months because I'm up in Edinburgh with everything going on. Um, I don't have access to all of my unread physical books that are in London. But that also forced me to confront how many unread books I actually have on my Kindle and it's quite a few. So I made a list and was surprised myself by how many unread books are on here. There are books I've bought myself, there are a lot of books I was sent for review or downloaded off NetGalley and a few I got for free elsewhere like for, for deals. And I think because they're on the Kindle, because they're not on my bookshelf staring at me, I forget I even have access to them. I'm not saying I don't have a massive physical TBR as well, but I kind of forget what I actually have on my Kindle and therefore forget get to pick it up until I often actively download something new to read on there and for that reason there's some books on, that have been on here for quite some time and I figured if I owned up to each and every one of those books in this video share with you my complete unread Kindle TBR it would reinvigorate me to pick up some of those books, read them over the coming weeks, get your opinions on the ones that you've read and hear from you which ones you'd like to see reviews for. So that's what I'm here to do. I'm going to keep the synopses short because like I said there's quite a few books and you're very welcome to keep count of how many books are on this list. So I'm going to start by listing all the books that I bought on ebook myself um, or were downloaded free from certain deals and I'll let you know when I'm switching to books that I was sent for review and got off NetGalley just so you know which ones are which. Um, the first one is actually the most recent Kindle book to join this list and it's Disposable Domestics by Grace Chang, Immigrant Women Workers in the Global Economy. I think the subheading of that one gives it all away, it's a non-fiction book. We then have The Bromance Book Club by Lisa K. Adams, which is a romance novel about a man whose relationship is falling apart and he decides to join a romance book club of men that sit and discuss relationships and what they learn from romance literature. We then have another non-fiction book, this one I believe is an essay collection called Women's Work, Men's Property the origins of gender and class which goes all the way back to antiquity and explores that topic throughout the ages. Similarly we have Peasant, Citizen and Slave by Ellen Meekson's Wood, another non-fiction book this time on the different stratas of Athenian society. Then we have one that actually I think ties for newest on this list because I just bought it for 99p and that's The Mermaid's Call by Catherine Stansfield and this is a Victorian crime novel about a women's detective agency in Cornwall and I just thought that sounded brilliant. We then have Mangoes and Mistletoe by Adrian Herrera, which is a contemporary queer female romance novel. Then there's No Man Can Tame by Miranda Honfleur, which is the first in the Dark Elves of Night Bloom series, and I gather this is a fancy novel. I picked this one up on a whim because it was super cheap on Kindle and don't know much else about it, but I think there's some romance elements, so fantasy romance ticks the boxes. Bringing Down the Duke by Evie Dunmore is a historical romance novel set in London about a suffragette, which I know I will be reading soon because it is the Feminist Orchestra Book Club read for uh, May, June. My Lovely Wife by Samantha Downing. I'm pretty sure I picked this one up because I saw it mentioned on Kayla's channel. And it's a thriller novel about a couple, I believe, who like to commit murders together. We then have Brown Girl in the Ring by Nalo Hopkinson, which is a science fiction, futuristic, dystopian novel, perhaps with hints of fantasy, because it mentions gods in there that I also think plays on themes of gender and race and sounds brilliant. This Lie Will Kill You by Chelsea Pitcher is a young adult thriller novel about five friends who have a secret about something that happened one night a year ago and I've said it once but I'll say it again I love me a young adult thriller. The Curse Giver by Dora Mikado. This I believe is a fantasy romance about two characters who are actually enemies but fall in love I assume. And then lastly Seas of Crimson Silk by Emma Hamm which is the first in the Burning Empire series, another one which goes down the fantasy arranged marriage romance trope which I'm usually here for and I've read and enjoyed Emma Ham's books in the past. So then we move on to the books that I have either been sent e-copies for review or downloaded off NetGalley for review. First up there's The Clergyman's Wife by Molly Greenley and this is a follow-up to Pride and Prejudice but following Elizabeth's friend Charlotte Lucas, now Charlotte Collins. Then we have Snapshot by Marilyn Todd 
a historical thriller set in late 1800s London about the first ever crime scene photographer. The Women of Dauphine by Deb Janerson, which is a queer romance between two women, one of whom is a ghost. A Song Below Water by Bethany C. Morrow, which is a YA contemporary fantasy with sirens living amongst ordinary people. Crown of Feathers by Nikki Palpretto, which from what I understand is basically like a dragon rider novel, except they don't ride dragons, they ride phoenixes. The Order of the Pure Moon Reflected in Water by Zen Cho. I only requested this one based on the author because I love Zen Cho, but from what I understand it's about a group of thieves who have to protect a sacred relic of some sort. Love's Recipe by Mila Nix, which is a contemporary romance novel set in a restaurant. Daughters of Night by Laura Shepherd Robinson, which is another historical crime novel set in London, this time in the late 1700s. The Blacksmith Queen by G. A. Aitken, which is book one in the Scarred Earth Saga, a fantasy romance series that I believe includes centaurs, so that was enough for me. Or What You Will by Joe Walton, which sounds like a super surreal novel about an author's creation that comes to life and has been taking different forms for all their books and now maybe is seeping into the real world. I don't fully understand, but I love Joe Walton, so I'm willing to give it a shot. Never Contented Things by Sarah Porter, which I believe is actually a standalone YA fancy novel, and I feel like that's a little bit unique in, in the sort of world of series everywhere, series everywhere, uh, but this one sounds like a dark fancy novel where two siblings get trapped in the realm of the Fae. Forest of Souls by Laurie M. Lee, which is in a high fantasy novel where I believe the main character discovers that she can bring others back from the dead. Saint X by Alexis Shaitkin, which is a contemporary thriller about a woman who many years after the murder of her sister becomes obsessed with solving the crime. And then lastly Cupid's Match by Laura Palfreyman, which I believe is a modern contemporary romance with a fantastical spin because Cupid, god of love, is in fact real and accidentally manages to fall in love himself. So there you have it, those are all of the unread books on my Kindle. Now talking about them here has really reminded me how excited I am for so many of them, so I hope this will be the push I need and I do have uh, plenty of access and time to be getting through them, so let me know which ones you've read that you think I will enjoy or just any ones you'd like to hear me review you and please own up to your own numbers of unread ebooks in the comments down below if it also applies to you because I'd like to not be alone but until next time happy reading and I'll see you all again soon bye guys